LeBron is playing out of his mind. Yeah. I mean, and and it's kind of funny that we're saying this as if it's a surprise, but you just don't see people at his advancing age um, playing. I mean, he, he is awesome. There's no other way to put it. And the team can make this playoff mm-hmm. run if they have a more – I mean, you you just wrote about it this week, so you know where I'm going with this. Mm-hmm. What what do they do? There are options on the table, and what happens trade deadline and everything because we're we're approaching that time right yeah. now here. Look, they'll have the option to upgrade the roster with some kind of supporting piece. I don't believe that the blockbuster trade that their front office has been looking for is out there. Bradley Beal is not going to be available at the trade deadline. Damian Lillard is not going to get be available at the trade deadline. You're not going to get that guy, at least not by February. But if you're looking at a Bojan Bogdanovic in Detroit, if perhaps you're looking at Christian Wood down in Dallas or one of the many pieces Utah is going to put uh, on the market before uh, mid-February, those guys are going to be available. The question is, will that Lakers front office and will ownership be willing to include one or more first-round picks to get it? That, that's the multi-million dollar question here. We know LeBron wants help. I mean, I, my, my friend Brian Windhorst over at ESPN yes. had a great note in one of his recent podcasts where he said, LeBron in his entire 20-year career has only played with five rookie first-round picks. LeBron doesn't care about first-round picks. He wants what you can get for first-round picks. The only consequential player of those five was Norris Cole, who helped Miami uh, back in their his heat days. Um So LeBron wants you to move these picks, but the Lakers got to be looking around going, if we move a 2027 first round pick for Bogdanovich, does that put us in contention? Does that make us Western Conference favorites? Or is it better to keep our proverbial powder dry, go into next offseason and hope that the guys I mentioned, Lillard, Beal, others are available when we can maybe make a play for them? When LeBron's 39? This is the problem. This is the conundrum. This is one of those stories where... If I sit down and start to talk about it or write about it, I can see both sides pretty clearly. LeBron is looking at himself going, I'm 38. If my team was good, you'd be talking about me in the MVP conversation right now. A 38-year-old. I mean, this is not Jordan. Jordan at 38 was putting up numbers, but he wasn't capable of carrying a team to a championship at that stage of his career. LeBron is. He just needs one or two more pieces to help him out. But the Lakers... You're not going to be able to convince anyone that Bogdanovich, Wood, Jordan Clarkson, Kelly Olynyk, those guys that are going to be available are going to push them over the finish line. So it's one of those stories where I can clearly see both sides of it. Yeah, I know. It's it's like LeBron is the uh, Mona Lisa Vito character, mm-hmm. like stamping the feet, like the clock. You, you know ticking, where you yeah. know where I you know? You know, when I think about this when I when I do side when I when I come down to siding with LeBron because the Lakers committed to him and, and they said, look. You know, we want to give you this contract extension. We want you part of the team beyond this season. They made a commitment to LeBron James. And in doing that, they have a commitment to build a team around him that can win and not worry about what's going to happen in 2027 or 2029. I mean, do you really think Rob Palenka should be that concerned about 2027 and 2029? Is Rob Palenka going to be around if this team's not successful in 27 or 29? I I think the short-term future has to you know, outweigh the long-term effects. I totally agree with you on that fact. Total, and worry about the future in the future. Yeah. And and you, you worry about the now, the now. I mean, like the Los Angeles Rams and the NFL are a perfect example about, you know, worry about the future when it is. But that trophy in the case looks beautiful. That parade that happened. And by the happened, way, they're, they're not but, devoid of first-round picks either. Like, they just can't move right. these upcoming Correct. picks over the next few years. So they're going to be able to rebuild if they have to they just can't trade anything till 27 and and then the other part of this um conversation chris mannix here from sports illustrated is you know i'm watching julius randall balling out in new york you know i mean kuzma uh in washington i mean these guys used to be here and Mm -hmm. were the guys that were young when lebron was here and arriving right i mean these so and lebron was kind of like if i'm not mistaken you tell me get these guys out of here, bring me Anthony Davis. Mm. And they won in the bubble, I understand. But doesn't LeBron kind of hold a little bit of responsibility for the current situation as well? I I think he holds some responsibility when it comes to Westbrook. I I think the Davis deal, you know, Laker fans hate when you say this, but they did overpay for Davis. They went out and gave up virtually all their capital for a guy that wanted to be in LA anyway and wasn't really going to accept a deal anywhere else. They were kind of bidding against themselves 
in that situation. The Westbrook deal didn't need to happen. Westbrook went, you know, was in Oklahoma City and it didn't work at the end. He went to Houston. It didn't work at the end. He went to Washington. It didn't work there virtually all season long. Why LeBron and the Lakers thought that bringing him into this situation would have been effective, I'll never really understand, especially when you're dealing valuable role players. You mentioned Kuzma, who is another one of those guys the Lakers might even look at in terms of trades uh, from Washington because he's going to be available most likely. But Contavious Caldwell Pope, like he's now in Denver he's, yeah. making three point shots for them. Like w- when you look at how successful teams have built out around LeBron, they've put shooters around him and Caldwell Pope shooter Kuzma, not necessarily this lethal shooter, but he's a guy that can make shots. They went out there and brought in a non shooter. Yeah, that in and of itself just never made any sense. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.